Hey guys, so it's like 10 o'clock my time, which is 11 o'clock your time, and I promise this is not because I forgot. Today's just been kind of really busy. My brother's home for the holidays, and we went to Amarillo today, and we saw Catching Fire, finally. And then when we came back, we watched Gatsby, because I hadn't seen it, and my brother has it, which, Christy, apparently you found quite similar to the book of the month, which is what I'm going to be talking about. The beginning of everything. Um, like you, I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. I couldn't round up though, so I sit at 4.5, although I hate the fact that you can't give half stars on Goodreads. But whatever. Um, I enjoyed it. I also thought it was somewhat similar to Paper Towns, but at the same time it was absolutely nothing like Paper Towns. Um, I, <clears throat> this is probably going to be completely disjointed because I'm tired, but we'll see how this goes. Um, I loved all the, like, geek culture references, Christy, like you said, the Harry Potter, the Doctor Who, um, I found it amusing with the whole dissing of Twilight and all that kind of stuff. There were a couple others I found highly amusing and but I don't remember what they are off the top of my head um, but it was kind of like I wouldn't say like an inside joke but it kind of was an inside joke like it made you like hee hee I know what they're talking about and stuff um, there are a couple cases like that but I don't know there are, there are some little things that I thought were neat like I thought I liked the Morse code and all that kind of stuff and between the windows and I liked the fact that Cassidy while she had her own problems was well she wanted to get Ezra to I guess just see himself differently and think out of the box like not be afraid of necessarily what other people think or be afraid to um, like express himself or whatnot because there was one point where she's like you know I think you're like a lot funnier than then you give yourself credit for or something like that. She's like, I see how you, um, like, th about, are about to say something witty, but then hold back because you think you're either going to be made fun of or no one's going to get it. I mean, and I kind of think we all get that at some point. So I thought that was cool. And then there was one quote that I wrote down because I thought it was, I thought it was interesting and it kind of just like stuck with me a little bit. Well, there were two, but one. Um, it said, we have all been fooled into believing in people who are entirely imaginary, made up prisoners in a hypothetical panopticon, but the, um, the point isn't whether or not you believe in imaginary people, it's whether or not you want to, which, I don't know, that just kind of stuck with me, um, <clears throat> for both, like, the literary sense, where, like, kids believe in Santa, Easter Bunny, all that kind of stuff, um, people in TV shows or books or whatever the case may be kind of become real if, if you get attached to them. Um, like I guess a good example most recently Christy is Allegiant because we both kind of <laughs> kind of freaked out or The Book Thief because we've all read that and we all kind of fell in love with all the characters whatever um, but you kind of believe in them but even though you know they're imaginary you, you you just kind of continue, you want to know what happens to them, you want to know where they end up, they become real. But then on the flip side of that, there's the like rea real reality sense, I don't know how you'd say that, where you, you see people how you want to see them, and you can explain away things that you just don't want to worry about, like I guess you can explain away someone's flaws or you'll or you can like wallow in them I guess let it eat at you but you see you paint people how you want to see them and so a lot of times they could end up on a pedestal kind of like Cassidy was to Ezra and he thought she was this wonderful great thing and then that also ties back into Margot with Paper Towns where oh, I can't even remember the main character's name I need to reread that but he 
put Margot up on this pedestal where I remember there's one part where he realized this that she is not any different she's just a girl I kind of thought that was interesting and how he realizes that it was really all him he just needed a little push I guess but um I enjoyed it and I don't want to give it away because I don't know Liz you said you hadn't finished it yet I hope you have by now but we'll see um anyway I don't want to give too much away the ending I saw about half of it coming the other half and how Ezra relates and why Cassidy is the way she is I I was a little surprised not enough to like oh goodness this is shocking and I can't believe I didn't see that coming because I see most things coming but I, it, it was it was it's a little curveball um, but Christy I'll tell you this real quick it's funny because I finished it and the part about the coyotes um, it was kind of funny because I was driving to class I think the day after I finished it and as I'm pulling on to like pulling off to go to class from Hartley um, I guess onto the highway I see two coyotes dart across the road and I was like well <laughs> that's interesting <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I just, little tidbit. But yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Um, and Christy, you forgot to mention your January book, or December. Yes, December, because January is mine. And I already have that picked out. But anyway, Christy, you forgot to mention your book, so... I don't know if you put it in the comments or not, because I watched that video on my phone. Anyway, in other worlds of me, um... <laughs> Like I said, my brother's in town. We went to see Catching Fire, which was wonderful. And it makes me so sad to see Cinna die. But I loved it. And my brother went with me and he liked it. And I thought it, the, I don't remember in Catching Fire if Snow actually, if they actually did anything, if they actually had Snow and his family. But if, I don't remember. Um, but if it wasn't, that was a really nice touch with the granddaughter wanting to be like Katniss and saying, oh, I want, like, oh, everyone wears their hair like this in school now. And how she was like, um, I hope I'm in love with, that much in love with someone someday. But the kicker and all that was that she looked like Prim. And I thought that was fantastic on their part. But wonderful movie beautiful music. I need soundtracks now, but I don't have that much money yet. Um, anyway, and then what else? Book Thief is finally in Amarillo, so hopefully I'll get mom to go with me like Monday or something. If not, I'll just go by myself because I gotta see it and it's only gonna be there for like a week or something according to online sources at the moment. So I'm not gonna take any chances. Um, had to go deal with the cows will not deal with, but we had to weigh out some of the calves. Supposed to do 400, only got 200 done. We were there from like 9 to 4, and we only got 200 done because it was that muddy. It took six of us to do 200, when if it hadn't been so muddy, it we would have gotten done. But it was muddy because it snowed, which is fun, but it completely threw me off the whole Thanksgiving thing, because now I just want Christmas. But after Santa goes in the Macy's Day Parade tomorrow, I can officially listen to Christmas music and do Christmassy things, which I'm excited about. I'm also excited about my class being almost over. <laughs> but anyway, that's my life at the moment. That's what's going on in the world of Kirsten. Yeah, Liz, I will see you on Friday, and Christy, I guess I'll see you in, I guess, another week. Um, good luck on your papers and everything, and I hope both of y'all have a fantastic Thanksgiving. Bye.